So hello everyone and welcome to 2024, our first YouTube video of 2024, just purely because I started the year uh, running. I've been training and consulting already from like the 3rd of January and uh, every time I come to sit down and do something for YouTube, it just gets pushed off. Uh, I am full of cold. You could probably hear that in my voice. I'll try and edit it out as much as I can. There's nothing worse than listening to somebody coughing and spluttering. Anyway, here is a short update for you. Before we get into the main kind of uh, thrust of this video is I'm going to talk to you about the latest issue of the IPS toolkit and we'll move to the other side of the office and I'll, I'll do some a kind of a short demo of what the IPS toolkit is up to. We ended 2023 uh, with a huge bang uh, at our conference. It was fantastic. I've had several requests for that AI and IPS presentation that I gave at TDW Live. The Because uh, it was first day, I had some IT issues, which meant I got some lovely video, but the audio didn't record. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually re-record that and... Several of you have, have said that you want to share the presentation internally with uh, some of your your other teams. So I'm, my aim is to get that done as soon as possible. And then if you attended TDW Live day one, you'll get access to that. Otherwise, if you want to get access to it, you'll need to talk to me about it. Um, so we had a great Q1 already this year. I've been out and about and done some training, which has been fantastic. And... What I did over Christmas is I spent a lot of time, I'll show you in the IPS toolkit, I spent a lot of time kind of triangulating a lot of the S-series specifications. So looking at what uh, one specification says to do to compared to what another part of a spe specification says what to do and then kind of trying to triangulate them so that we can really make sense of what all of these S-series specifications are doing. And then um, I took all of that that I did over Christmas to my first training session early January. And then there was a second training session where we, we, we used it, the training material as well. And it went down absolutely fantastic. Kind of in my mind's eye, what I wanted to achieve. And I kind of achieved it, which was which was quite nice. So we are looking at um, some new ways that we can do this training and you'll see that from the IPS toolkit when uh, we when we open it up shortly and have a look at it how do we make the training of these let's be honest not the most exciting subject in the world how do we make it a little bit more exciting how do we make it a little bit more engaging and a little bit more interactive so that we can actually see things like data flows and if something appears in 2000m where does it relate in s1000d and where does it originate in 3000 etc so i spent a lot of time looking at the, uh, the the kind of data models and XML schemas associated with all of the S-series specifications and then identifying where there are gaps, where there are errors, uh, where there are question marks and, um, and really enjoyed putting together some interactive guides and interactive maps, which is what you're going to see very, very shortly. So if I haven't said it already, I wish you all the very best of success and health for 2024. I hope that we bump into each other at some events uh, this year. I know that the the dates, I don't know whether it's been publicly announced yet, the, the S-Series user forum has been announced, but I don't know whether that's internal or external, so I don't want to... Um, spoiler that. We've already set the dates for TDW Live this year. I've got a banging the um, theme for it this year. Something that uh, builds on the AI stuff that we learnt last year. So uh, really looking forward to, to doing that and actually having to teach myself some programming again, which is not something I have done for for a very long time. I think ZX Spectrum was the last computer that I programmed. So anybody out there that's into Python and that kind of stuff, yeah, if you've got some pointers, get in touch and let me know. But um, yeah, my old grey brain cells are uh, trying to get my head around these these this programming language so we can use it to build on something that we started last year. Anyway, I look forward to supporting you this year and uh, I'm going to try and be a little bit more consistent with YouTube, even if it is using things like shorts and just saying, you know, Claire suggested that I just do it like a weekly roundup on a Friday that I use, you know, 60 seconds. This is what we did this week. This is who we've been supporting this week. And then we dump that on onto YouTube. So anyway, 
let's hop over the other side of the office and look at the IPS toolkit and what we've done in the IPS toolkit. So welcome to the other side of the office here. And on screen, you can see the latest version of the IPS toolkit. And those of you who are not familiar with the IPS toolkit, it's an extension to um, a Ludo mind manager, something that we I had an idea a long, long time ago about how we can simplify uh, the adoption of things like S1000D, 2000M, uh, see the relationships between things like um, 3000, 2000, 1000. And I'm actually looking at all of the UOFs and how they all talk to each other, how they link uh, and going back into things like the uh, the common data model. So um, before we start, those of you who are familiar with the, the help map, so we, we, in, we include a help map that kind of talks you through all of the, the features that are involved in um, the, a specific release of the IPS toolkit. And 2.3 was kind of our first kind of formal release, if you like, robust release. And we use tagging so that you can filter on uh, the, the specific version of the IPS toolkit that you might be using. So if you know, the tool assumes that you know how to use mind mapping software, of course, but the 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 ability in this help menu is so that you can filter on these kind of tags to say what is uh, available to you in uh, your current release of the IPS toolkit. So what have we added? Well, so I'm actually talk a little bit. About, we added something at 2.6, which was for the uh, visualization of an S1000D process data module. And uh, then at 2.7, we I had a kind of a eureka moment over over the Christmas break. So I spoke to Nick, who helps me uh, develop this tool. And I said, wouldn't it be great if we actually put a lot of training resources for those that are doing my classroom courses uh, and we could open resources directly from within inside Mind Manager or the IPS toolkit? And I'll talk to you about some of those here. So down the utilities section here, we have the ability to import a process data module uh, we have the the ability to import a publication module and we also have the ability to import a Brex module. So why do we have these three um, functions that we've added to the toolkit is because it's a the tool is designed to try and simplify things like reviewing, agreeing, understanding some of the, the concepts available specifically in S1000D. So we can open up something like a publication module, process module, Brex module, and we can actually visually see what's going. I'll show you um, those working very shortly. And then on the training aid side, this is used when I, I go to a classroom and we can uh, we can sit and we can go through some concepts. We've basically centralized a lot of the, uh, the training aids that I've created over the last few years, and we've centralized them all together here inside the IPS toolkit. So, 2000M resources will open up a, um, when I'm doing a 2000M course, we have a, a portal that compares the different versions of 2000M and what's going on with those. So that, that will open. The same with S1000D authoring. If I'm doing an authoring course, there are exercises that we work through. They're all held inside uh, a portal as well. So this will open up that portal. The S1000D reference guide is just a HTML5 interactive guide that I created many years ago. And it's just something that now, uh, when we're looking at things like the S1000D codification methodologies, uh, we can open up that guide. And when I'm going through the lessons on screen, people can open it up and uh, they can see what's going on. Training resources is just a link back to our IPS uh, training website, which means that for when I deliver a classroom course, we create... Uh, an area for clients specifically there that they get access to templates and specific tutorials that they may ask for, etc. The thing that I worked on over Christmas, which was the thing that I've I've really enjoyed uh, putting together, was the ten thousand I or the one thousand mapping uh, map. I'll show you that as well. And I've put together a very short or smaller S two thousand M to S one thousand D IPD. Uh, mapping map as well so people can see where the information's coming from 
in 2000M that's being mapped over into S1000D. So let's let's have a look at some of these in, in, in action. So if we go at the um, utility section here, if I go for import the process data module uh, and I go to my modules and I click on, so this process data module was um, kindly provided by uh, the guys at RWS. They, they're doing a lot of work with uh, the process data module. And um, so we won't go into you know massive detail here, um, but if I control D and then control D, you can see you can open it up uh, slow, in slow time here. You can see that we've, well, all we've done is imported the, the process data module for us to be able to start visualizing it in a way that makes sense so people can actually uh, look at this now all of i won't go into all of the detail here but if we click on uh, some of these you can see that we also then import the the xml so you can actually go and have a look at the xml if you want to have a look at the xml as well so why is this for me why why do i think this is necessary one the process data module is quite complex and um, and those that need to verify it or use it aren't necessarily programmers or they don't necessarily understand what programming uh, languages are but they are and they do need to understand the uh, the, the tech pubs processes that are being put inside uh, the the process data module i'm not allowed to call it a pdm i've been told off for calling it a pdm so um so that's that that one there and We've we've got some other cool little ideas that we're working on for this as well. Um, the same with the the publication module. If I just I'm just going to open up any random kind of publication module here. These are just the bike examples. Uh, and what we've done as well is not only will it import the the publication module. If there are nested publication modules, it will also uh, create uh, sub maps for those. So here's just a very uh, simple. The bike data modules that are inside this uh, this process data module uh, the publication module sorry so again it's just about being able to visualize uh, what's going on inside our inside our map so we can see what's actually going on inside the publication itself now of course there are clever little things that we can add to this going forward uh, which we will do but again, if I, I don't know, I'm going to put myself on the spot here, see if I can, if I import another publication module. I'm trying to remember which one has the nested. Does that one have the nested? I can't remember. So we also import the the ability to have, if you've got publication modules that refer to other publication modules, um, then, you know, it will also go off and reference those and it will generate a sub uh, publication module map so you can then go and have a look at those right click on them it'll generate a link and then what it'll do is it'll generate a um, a map associated with that so that's that's a cool little thing and that's great as well for for training brex modules is another one that um, that people struggle to have a look at so let's just open up any old bike sample here i don't like doing the bike samples but um, for the purposes of youtube this will have to do so we, we have the ability to import a Brex module. It takes a little bit longer than normal. So we have kind of our context rules, non-context rules, and any kind of um, URI type information that we might want to include in a Brex module. But again, we might want to involve people that want to look at this and um, they can you know help verify it, help um, develop it, et cetera. So it's not, it's not a generation tool. It doesn't create the Brex for us. Uh, but what it does is it allows us to um, use mapping capability to look at things like our context rules, our non-context rules. So if I just control D, if you're not familiar with that, um, with that shortcut, it will expand and extract. So here you can see at crew member type, it's giving us the, the values that we're allowed here for the, the crew member type. So um, the, the beauty of this kind of methodology, if you like, is that it just makes life a little bit easier when a when we're learning it in the classroom and again all of these have little xml snippets so we can look at the the xml snippets so when it comes to uh, learning and training so we're not actually having to open up a massive xml file and then everyone's eyes are getting blurred uh, trying to look at this so those 
are the main kind of utilities that we've added in the training aids uh, you can see that we've got these external resources here which i'm not going to open um, but you can go and do those uh, yourself but the ones that that i like that we've introduced here is the the 10,000 i resource or actually it's from the 1000 x specification is that what i've used for this and you can see that we've gone or to say we me i've gone through s 1000 d s 2000 m s 1000 x um and looked at the mapping from all of those specifications and the requirements from all of those specifications and put them inside a centralized map and what does that give us well right now i focused on the procedural and the ipds because that was what a customer needed me to focus on um, but of course as as this map matures uh, we will include uh, much more but if i control d you can see that now what i do is i include um, let's go something that might be a little bit more exciting you can see that we have the ability to go into the this is essentially a representation of the uh, procedural schema and then what we do is we can see where the information is coming from little exclamation marks are where i think i may have found a problem with the spec um, i just need to validate that but i'm including things that are optional mandatory or choice elements across um across the 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 for here this is the procedural and also if there is a requirement coming here you can see i've just drilled down it's saying that it's coming from the 3000 l um, system or the the 3000 l data so um so that was kind of the vision here for this map is not only does it help us on training to understand the data relationships across um the the specifications and how they interrelate and how they talk to each other um, but this is basically visualizing a lot of the stuff that's said in lots of words in the specifications and the schemas so the the reality is is that we make it a little bit uh, more intuitive to navigate around and um we you know the 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 we've got some other ideas for this map as well which could make it a little bit more useful so right now this map will show you where 2000m and 3000l go into s1000d so what else have we included here this is a, a simple map that just extracts what's inside s1000d uh, and tells you uh, the the relationship between s1000d uh, and s2000m and you can see again we're using the um, the the tagging system here that's available to us within mind manager to to look at uh, the mandatory the optional uh, kind of information in fact i did get a question in on ipds over the weekend which i'll have to answer so one of the things that um that the tool's really good at and I'm, it's a bit outside of the scope of this one is the the, the ability to work with dmrls uh, what we're looking at right now is how to define a dmrl for your s1000d project and once you've defined your dmrl for your s1000d project um, there may be entries that need to come from other areas of the s series and so we're providing some import mechanisms for us to be able to do that so that is ladies and gents what's going on in the latest version of the ips toolkit tdw plus members have access to this already 2.7 i'm just waiting on a software signing certificate coming from the states apparently the rules have changed they have to send them to you on a dongle now so waiting for that to come as soon as that comes we'll make this available to uh, tdw plus members and anybody who's attending a tdw uh, classroom or, or online training course you get a, a three-month license of this anyway uh, to help you on your learning journey so there you have it ladies and gents and uh, if you have any questions or want to get in touch you know where i am look forward to speaking to you on the next one